In this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can create a skeleton for our 2.5D puppet and put the skin weighting on it and kind of check out deformation and make sure everything's kind of working correctly for us. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm using Maya 2016 and you can see everything's been set up with these cards here. Uh, everything's been explained in the previous video how to set up the geometry for this thing. I'm going to turn on the wireframe on shaded on uh, this thing here right now so we can kind of take a look at the geometry and also get uh, the visual for this thing that uh, we're working with right now. So the next thing we're going to want to do, uh, we're going to be working with skeletons. Things have changed in this menu a little bit. Um, I believe in the old version of Maya it was just considered animation, um, but now they've changed this to where um, they've got this set that's called rigging and this is where you're going to be able to start looking at the things for building your skeleton. So depending on what version of Maya that you're using you're going to have to come here and either use animation or rigging. Just go through the menu and you should be able to find this. What you're looking for is skeleton. This whole menu set that we see up here. So if we go up and through here we're going to be able to go to this area that says create joints. Let's just go ahead and open up the option box for this. So we'll go ahead and click on this and let me drag this off uh, the other screen onto here real quick and um, so I, I'm not changing anything on this thing I'm just gonna leave the uh, the settings the way that it is I do want to just kind of mention I believe this primary axis it's set to X and that has to do with uh, the order that Maya kind of calculates its rotations it's going to do X first, um, Y second, and Z axis uh, third. And if you take a look down here at this little uh, origin thing here, you can see the different uh, uh, the different directions that we've got uh, going on here for this thing. Um, the reason our character is facing this direction with X is because Unreal Engine um, is expecting it that way. Uh, I think I had to rotate the character to um, get everything to kind of line up within the world and I believe that's for their different movement. But the thing I was trying to um, get you to understand with this uh, rotation on this thing, if I go ahead and just select um, maybe like the body here and then put it on the rotate tool um, that you can see the um, axis here this is going to be Z and we want um, X like this. Um, if you're going to have any kind of rolling motion on a joint, you want to make sure that it's going to rotate uh, X first. So I don't think I'm going to have anything within this uh, puppet that's going to actually matter for um, that kind of rolling motion. You can think of a rolling motion in your uh, through your forearm, right? going from your elbow to your wrist, that kind of uh, rotation as you twist your hand uh, and look at the palm and make your palm kind of face up. We're talking about the, that kind of um, that kind of twist motion and that becomes a little bit important at that point if you want to set up a rig later on for that type of motion. So I think that's the only thing you gotta kind of keep in mind whenever you're uh, making the skeleton for this stuff. So it is possible we could be in this view that we see here, this perspective view. Um, because I'm working with something flat, it would probably make a whole lot more sense if I went to a side view. So I'm just going to hit the space bar and hover my cursor over the area that I want to zoom in to that viewport. So you can see it's pretty easy for you to go back and forth between these different uh, viewports. I'm going to go to the side viewport here and just kind of zoom in a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to create is um, I'll just make a joint right at the origin. So I can hold down the uh, X key and that's going to temporarily turn on this grid snapping and I can snap to the grid here like this. And that's going to give me my world root. That, um, that used to be kind of important for the old version of um, Unreal Engine. I don't think it's quite as big of a deal anymore, but I might as well just go ahead and create it there. Uh, the next one is going to be the maybe the root of the character, where the character, um, all of its motion, kind of translation and things like that, moving around, will kind of come from this. So I got a I got a choice here. I can um, either split off and start trying to create the tail, but I think I'll do something where I'm going to click and start adding some joints for uh, the body part 
and then I think I'll get one last joint right here for the uh, for where the uh, the head will be and then I don't really need this joint but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyways and I'll put this at the end of the um, his snout here just for reference and the other thing is if we want some kind of orientation for this last joint we can give another joint right down here like this and then this joint here you just saw it kind of snap and it kind of aims to this so I can just uh, put on the pick tool and just kind of end that tool that you see here I don't need this joint anymore I can just select it and then hit backspace and I'm gonna just check this in the 3d view real quick and so you can see that because we're in that side view of uh, if you imagine a plane running down this X uh, or this red axis that you see here which is actually Z um, it's going to create all the joints right on there like that now some other things to kind of note about joints is <clears throat> they're going to contain um, translation information and rotation information and scale information and uh, you know for any other object you would be able to take this thing and kind of zero it at, zero out the translation on this um, you're not able to do that with joints because they do have to um, have um, their orientation their position in the world has to be remembered so it's going to always kind of keep that on there for this thing here so you can see if I select this thing and if we uh, went back to uh, modify freeze transformations like we looked at in an earlier video and if we turn off scale and rotation if I hit apply for that you see it doesn't it's not going to freeze out that translation so if you ever run into that that's kind of what's going on for that um, the other thing is here we've got if we put it on rotation like this for the joint we can take a look at it let's hit control a to bring up the attribute editor and yours might load up in this window over here I like to just pull it off of there it's possible that you can just dock it into here and I like to just pull that thing off and have that thing kind of floating like this um, so you can see if we go to this area for the joints there's this joint orient and actually it looks like it's storing the rotation that we have within inside of uh, this uh, joint orient so if we went here and we said modify freeze transformations and then we we're going to freeze the joint orient I believe this number is going to be all this number is going to be set to zero and it's going to put this rotation onto this joint and it'll show up in the channel box over here so we did that there and it looks like it zeroed everything out but what it did do is um, it kind of moved our skeleton a little bit I'm gonna hit undo real quick for that and just hit apply and see if we can kind of see this thing moving a little bit so you can see that um, on this joint here as well looks like um, we've kind of zeroed it out for this one here and it's kind of messed up the orientation of the joints as well so I'm going to um, just leave that alone I'm gonna get this back to where we were at before on here and when I look at this now if you select this thing you can see this joint should be pointing at this joint here that we see um, that's kind of an important thing at least f for me later on when you get uh, like rigging controls on there and things like that this stuff can change quite a bit and you can kind of customize this a little but I like to have the joints this uh, parent um, pointing down towards the child and that's kind of what we had to do with this thing here at the end that's why we created this other joint just so it would uh, point towards that child now for this end joint we could go to this joint orient and just zero this thing out like this and uh, that joint should be uh, nice and uh, nice and straight kind of at this angle that you see going here the next thing is um, you're definitely going to want to name all your different joints and make sure you're uh, keeping track of this stuff so um, you could call this something like world space root something like that and this one could be the root of the character this one maybe you do something like spine underscore zero zero one and I'm gonna copy the name of this thing like this and I'm just gonna paste here and this is spine two 
and let's see, spine, spine O2, and this is spine 3, and this one I'm going to call the head joint, like this, and just call this snout, like that, there, okay, and um, we could continue and just use this tool here and we could um, start to make joints. It's also possible in the 3D view if we wanted to, let's say we wanted to snap to a uh, vert, we could hold down V and then that would uh, temporarily turn on vert snapping and we could snap this to this uh, point here and then maybe do this and then do the end kind of like that, and you can see it's actually snapping to that geometry. So we've got different ways of creating this. We could have done it from the side view. If we would have done it on the side view, it would have been uh, created right down that center plane. You see how there's now distance on there because it's actually snapping uh, to that geometry. Now, I don't really like the placement of this. You do really need to think about um, where it is that this thing should be whenever it's rotating. So I'm just going to click and drag this thing here like this. Oops, and uh, it's best to take these after it's been created and not just take like this joint here and move it. It's, it's possible you can do that, um, but I'll show you what happens whenever you do that. Um, you see how this, when you put it on rotate, this thing no longer aims at its child anymore. So to get around that, we kind of, you can move any kind of root joint. So this is kind of a root joint right now for this whole little chain that we have going on here. You can take this thing and you can move it around. What is better is if we rotate this thing into place. And if you want to change the placement of this joint, you put it on your move tool. And let's go into the, the move settings for this thing. This time, instead of um, doing a world movement, we go to object. Okay, this has been kind of changed just a little bit. So if I uh, go along a rotation axis, you can see that my manipulator changes to this angle that we have here. So I can just push this joint along this area right here like this. Now I can take it and when I rotate it, let's say I want to rotate it at this angle here and I select this joint and I want to move it, we could just move this thing uh, back like this and I'll have it be right at the end here. I can also check the joint orientation on this. Since I didn't make another joint past this one, you see how we've got some of these kind of crazy numbers in the joint orient? I'm just going to take these and zero them out. Um, if you're not really too familiar with skeletons, some of this stuff is probably not going to matter all that much to you, but it will matter whenever you go to hand this off to an animator and you want like an animator to start animating on these bones. You want somebody to be able to come and grab the work that you've done and just be able to go, if I rotate this thing, see how it's just rotating in this one axis? Um, if things aren't set up correctly, it's going to be a little bit odd for people to know exactly what it is that they're kind of uh, that they're working with on this. So um, that's why this joint orient stuff does uh, does kind of matter uh, for things. Um, so we've got that there. Um, and let's take a look real quick and see what the differences are in this setup that we have here if we go ahead and go to the side view and then create a joint that same way. So I'm just going to do it off to the side here where we're going to start here come down here, do something like this, and then just drag off uh, like this as well. And we'll get rid of that last joint. Let's take the joint orient on this and just zero it out so then that way, you know, everything's nice and uh, straight with this angle here. And we'll take a look at the joint orient on this. So just want to check this versus what we have here. So you can see we've got a negative 90 on this and a negative 90 here. And so we've got the same thing. The only the only thing that this angle that we have here on Y is um, this angle going down here. So everything should be fine. I just wanted to double check and make sure we weren't introducing anything kind of odd to the skeleton uh, while we're creating things that way. 
The next thing is to kind of get things parented up. Because you can see here, this thing just kind of floats all by itself. And then this is going to actually be the jaw. Um, so we'll call this jaw like this. Maybe we'll call this jaw mid. And we can call this jaw end. And I don't think I'm really going to be deforming anything, but this joint here would give us the opportunity to take the uh, mouth and kind of bend it if we wanted. We could open it even a little bit wider. So if we're doing this kind of cartoony look, it might work out for us. So we've got this jaw, and we really need this thing to kind of follow um, if, let's say, we're going to rotate the head, right? So if we figured this was the point for the head, we would want the jaw to follow uh, that as well. So um, what we can do for that is we can parent it to this one. If we parent this joint here to this joint, all the rotation that we have on the head, the jaw would follow, but it would give us the opportunity to take this and rotate it up, and we could also take our jaw and rotate it down at that point so we could really stretch out the head if we wanted. So that might be a better option for us. So I'm going to undo here. So the way to kind of uh, get this thing parented up, we could go ahead and just take this thing and middle mouse drag it in the outliner. So you can just go to Windows Outliner if you don't have the outliner open. And you can middle mouse drag it onto, let's say, the spine 3, like that. And you can see it makes this new hierarchy connection through there like that. Um, I always have to kind of mess around with the correct order for this, but if I select this joint first and then shift select this joint and tap P, I believe we're going to do the same exact thing what we did with the middle mouse dragging. So if you want to do it in the viewport, it's possible to do that as well. So now you can see this becomes the new pivot point uh, for the entire head. The jaw has the ability to um, close up and then open very wide and we have also additional control for the rest of the head where that can open up uh, really wide and through there. Okay, so that's this section here. We'll go ahead and start working on the tail. Okay, for the tail we're going to approach this just a little bit different. We're going to use the grid a lot and we're in the perspective view here. We're going to go back to our skeleton and then create the joints tool. I'll just leave this open again just so we can uh, take a look at some of these things. I'm going to go ahead and hold down X and I can turn on um, grid snapping temporarily. So I'm going to snap to some point along the grid here then just hold down X and then maybe click a joint here, here, maybe something like this. I think I'll do two more like that and then uh, finish this out. We can hit enter or we can go up to the move tool. Either way, uh, it's up to you what you want to do. Um, again, let's take a look at the joint orient on this thing. So I'll hit control A and then we got this. I'm going to zero this thing out on the very last one here um, that we've got and we'll just check everything through here. Our translation that we've got and our joint orients and stuff and because we made this in a straight line everything should be um, nice and zeroed out uh, everything shouldn't have any kind of rotation on it at all for this stuff if you do notice if we take these joints and we move them really what we're doing we're giving it a translation of 40 units at least uh, for the scale that I have away from that joint so you can see that that number gets shorter as we get that joint closer to this one here and if we move this thing up you can see we would be something like that um, here so really the goal for me is to only get uh, you know translation in this one axis here and we're doing it, doing it on X and the reason that that's happening is because when we set this thing up, you can see these are the default settings for this. The primary axis is X. So I just want you to kind of keep getting this reinforced that the settings that we have for this, the X axis is going down uh, these joints here. And like I was saying, if we took this thing and we wanted to do some kind of roll motion for this, you want it to... Uh, only have those values stored 
in that one channel there. If uh, things are set up a different way, sometimes you get, uh, instead of just rotating that one axis like what we do that we're seeing, you might get a little bit of rotation on like Y and Z and it's just uh, a little bit messy. So I can select all these joints that we see here and I'm going to go ahead and take the rotation on, on X and set it to zero and then it should zero everything back out. Um, actually I got to do that one at a time because I didn't select uh, the hierarchy for that. So I'll just go ahead and click that and zero this thing out like this. And I wouldn't be uh, checking this stuff so hard if it wasn't at, you know, if we're not at the stage where we're actually creating a skeleton. Like, some of the stuff isn't that big of a deal once uh, things are set up, but I'm really kind of picky about everything while I'm trying to set up the skeleton. So I can go ahead and take this, and we've got it on our move manipulator. Uh, again, I changed it earlier for this along rotation axis. We could just switch this back over to world uh, while we're kind of moving these joints and I'm gonna go ahead and push this right up in here this will be the first point for uh, the tail and again I want to rotate these things into position like this and I want to select this joint when I go to the move for this again we were using this um, along rotation axis like that and you can see it kind of switches and then now I can just shorten up the length of this bone here and I can rotate this thing at the angle I want for that and I'm just gonna push this one back here so I'm just tapping we got Q um, for our pick W uh, for move and then E for rotate and then R for scale we're not gonna use scale but just so you know with those hotkeys kinda of what's going on so let me rotate that into position. I do want this thing to be moved back just a little bit more. And then I'll rotate it right to here. And then let me push this one right here. And I think I'll push this here. And we don't even need this joint here. So I'll just get rid of it like that. So again, the whole uh, naming of this thing Let's just go ahead and call this our tail, like this. And I'll do underscore zero zero, so I can copy this text and then do one like this. And then I can just paste two, three, set control V, like that. this and I'll call this one tail end like that and so all of our joints are now named up for us so again I want to take this thing and select it and then hold down shift and select the root and then tap P to parent and now you can see with this root joint what's starting to happen with this let's see the whole thing when we move the root it's going to move everything in the entire skeleton like that and especially if we grab the world the world space root that's going to move uh, the entire skeleton uh, as well but with this thing we could just put uh, some translation so just moving it forward or backward so that's kind of why you might want to separate those things out um, but you can see with this hierarchy setup that we've got here you know as long as we move the parent all the children are gonna move along with it and they're gonna rotate uh, along with it as well so I just showed you some rotation stuff and I did them one at a time um, we could go at this point if everything's set up right with this skeleton with this tail we can go edit and then uh, we need to actually select sorry select um, hierarchy right here so I'll do that and it's actually selecting all the joints and so when we rotate one joint, it's really rotating all of them, but if we've set this up correctly with this tail, we should be able to get this kind of uh, swinging motion. So definitely whenever you're setting up something like a tail or fingers and things like that, do this select uh, by hierarchy and then check this out and make sure that everything is kind of uh, working as you would expect for that. Okay, let's continue on and let's uh, go ahead and work on the legs for this character. So again, we're going to go to Skeleton and then go to our Create Joints. And let's just go ahead and because I have the spacing on the leg, I'm going to go ahead and hold down V and I'm going to snap to this point that you see here like this right now. 
um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go down here somewhere in the knee and I believe um, actually that's going to cause a problem. Okay, so um, I was hoping that we could just continue in building this skeleton uh, along this leg like this, but that's not going to work for us. So let's head on to you real quick. Let's just hit the space bar, go to the side view, and we can continue out this thing. So I'm just going to go to the knee. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go someplace here in the foot give some kind of little bend here in the foot and I'm thinking we'll need maybe a little bit here on the toe and then so I was gonna click and drag out here this will be the end of this and then do one extra joint that um, we can delete so I'll hit enter so you can see because we set that first point by snapping I know whenever I made the next joint and it snapped uh, well it actually created it on the grid that you see here because we're in the perspective view. Um, because we started this joint here and we went to the side view, it just continued out to build that skeleton and built everything that we needed and it uh, kept everything being created from this point right there that you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, thing on the toe here. We'll just check this end and make sure that there is no joint orient, which it does look like it's got a little bit there. So I'll hit zero for this and zero everything out like that and this time um, let's take a look at this uh, joint that we have here I'm not um, it's not exactly the placement that I wanted for this so I'm gonna hit uh, W to move this and we can move uh, everything so I think I'm gonna put it maybe somewhere uh, right around there um, now it is possible when we do movement, if we go to the options for this, uh, there is a an option for actually um, keeping the the position of the children and only moving the parent. And you can see that it exists uh, right here in this preserve uh, children. So I'm going to hit undo real quick because I want to keep all these right where they are. So I'm going to say preserve children and then I can move this joint into position here like this. And then now I'll take that thing off and I'll tap uh, E for this. Now where this causes an issue is that I don't believe this thing really points directly at its child anymore. You can see if I zoom out and you can see this kind of control that we see here, it is off by a, like a really uh, a very small amount. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of uh, of doing that. So uh, might have to do it the hard way. Uh, just kind of move this into position. And again, if we move this one here and we've got it on this a long rotation axis, we can kind of just lift this whole thing back up into place and I think the placement of that's going to be pretty good so just know that there's a difference between the way that you move that especially on the root like that it can cause you know your your rotation axis to be off just a little bit and uh, I like to try to keep that stuff uh, as clean as possible to where it kind of makes sense to where anybody can grab that thing so I'm going to call this um, F for front leg and call this leg and call this um, hip like this. So I'm going to be using this front leg thing quite a bit so I'm going to copy it like that and I'll call this one um, let's just grab this, it didn't actually copy so I'm going to copy this text so we've got this front leg and call this knee. This one will be ankle. Let's go ahead and call this one front leg foot underscore zero zero one. I'm just going to copy this text that you see here. I'm going to go into here, call the next one, I'm going to paste it, and then I'll do two like this and make this one three like that. And this one we'll go ahead and call this end like this. Okay, so that sets up our front leg. And now that we have the front leg set up, we can go ahead and just duplicate this thing so we can hit control D to duplicate that and this time I'm going to open this thing up I'm going to hit shift and click the plus button and it's going to open all these up we want to change uh, the name of this from front to back so we can replace the F with a B so we can select all these and 
then we just come up here to modify and do search and replace names and we can do selected we'll search for F underscore and we'll change that to B underscore like this and hit apply you can see it's going to change all that uh, right in there so that kind of comes in handy if you got to do a lot of renaming especially if you have a big chain of stuff it's going to put a one at the end of that hip uh, just because it's got to give it a different name but we can now get rid of that because we changed this here and then now we want to translate this thing and we're going to translate it back I'm going to come up to the back side of this I'm going to turn on uh, vert snapping temporarily so I'm going to hold down V and I can just move in this one axis and then select a vert right here like that and it's going to snap the leg there for this now I'm going to move it forward uh, like what you see here and I think we should be fairly good for that now all we got to do is take these and then parent it uh, to the root that we have here um, so we've got this I'm going to go ahead and select this here like that and then tap P and you can see it's going to parent this leg to this. I'm going to select this one, hold down control, and then click on root here, then tap P like that. Again, there's multiple ways that we can do this, but uh, that's just the way I'm choosing for uh, this portion here. Now I'm going to check this. Um, it looks like this might need to be moved just a little bit um, higher and through here. And gonna check this I would think this might need to be moved just a little bit more forward like that so I think that's a little bit better fit for things now so that's gonna give us our um, our leg that we have here and the process is gonna be exactly the same for the arms uh, the other thing that we have to kind of think about is I've got these extra pieces for like um, this eye that you see here now this one's a little bit different because we can just go to the joint tool that we had here. We can go back to skeleton, create joints, and I only need one joint for this uh, whole entire eye thing. So I can hold down V and just snap to a point on here like that, and then finish that thing out. I'll put it on the move tool, and then I'll move it roughly in the center of the eye like that. And I can just call this one eye uh, bug out because it's uh, making the eye kind of larger like this. And I want this thing to follow basically if we uh, rotate on this point. Um, I think I'm going to want it to follow this joint actually because this, you know, we had that opportunity to um, rotate the head up. And then this, if this was uh, parented to this joint here, this would kind of rotate everything, the head and the, jo the jaw. But if we did this thing where we animated this part of the face and raised it up, the eye wouldn't fall along because it would actually be parented to this right here, which you see, and you're not going to get um, the motion from this thing. So I'm going to hit undo like this, and I'm going to select this joint first, select this joint, and then I'm going to tap P like that. So now you can see if I animate this thing and put on rotate and rotate that thing up the eyes always gonna follow and we'd want the same thing to happen for the brow that we have here so um, again we can go take our joint tool I'm gonna go snap to a point that we have here hold down V and then snap here like this now if you remember from the earlier part of the video if we start continuing trying to create this skeletal chain up for the bra brow it's going to cause problems. So let's go to the side view, tap spacebar, come to the side here like this, and I'm going to make one joint here, here, here like this, and I think that's going to be enough for it. So I'm going to make that one last joint that we can get rid of and just kind of destroy. So we've got rid of this. I'm going to check the joint orientation on this one joint and get rid of any kind of values that I see on there like this. So this one, I'm going to hold down shift and open this whole thing up and just call this uh, brow underscore zero zero and let's copy this text and I'll put a one here like this and we'll just paste two three and I'm just going to call this one four. You could call it jaw, or um, sorry, brow end if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave that alone. And for this one, I want this to be parented to this part of the head. So I'm going to select this joint, 
then hold down shift, select this joint here, and tap P, and everything is now parented up. So I'm just going to finish up this video here uh, where we sit. Uh, the only thing I didn't make is the arms, and again, the arms are very similar to what we saw um, here on the legs. So this video definitely ran a little bit long. I was going to, thinking that I was going to start talking about skinning, but uh, I think we've got enough for this section right here. And the next video we're going to take a look at, I'll have the arms built out. We'll take this skeleton, we'll bind it to uh, the mesh to the skeleton, and then we'll start looking at how we can paint up the weights for this thing.